with the source or also called brachial sore or decubitus ulcer. Bed sores are typical example of a direct traumatic gangrene which usually occur in patient with prolonged recumbency in bed, prolonged bedridden patient. Um, what is uh, the direct cause of uh, bed sores and what is uh, the direct traumatic gangrene? Look for this uh, patient. If the patient lie in bed for a long time without changing his position, we all know that uh, there is uh, action and the counter action. The body weight exert downward action, downward action by the effect of gravity. And the bed gives a counter action in the opposite direction. And what is the victim? The victim is these tissues. Skin and deep tissues are now compressed between action and the counter action, leading to gangrene of the skin and the underlying tissue. Therefore, bed sores are typical example of direct traumatic gangrene, usually occur in prolonged bedridden patient due to prolonged compression of the skin and the underlying tissues. What are the predisposing factors for uh, bed sores. First of all and the most important is prolonged recumbency in bed with poor nurse care because if there is good nurse care this patient will change his position frequently doesn't allow compression of the tissue and the gangrene does not occur therefore prolonged recumbency in bed with poor nurse care also, uh, the most important predisposing factor for bedridden, prolonged bedridden and prolonged recumbency in bed. What is the typical patient? All the patient with denervation of the tissue. Denervation of the tissue means the tissues becomes less viable, easily com compressed and easily gangrened. What is the cause of denervation of the tissue, as in paraplegia or hemiplegia, are typical example of these patients. Also, uh, prolonged immobilization. Prolonged immobilization example, fracture, femur, pelvis, spine. In all these fractures, these are major fractures. The patient becomes a fixed in position for three months with compression of the tissue and the liability for bed sores. Also, all the patient, in all the patients, the tissues becomes devitalized. And most probably the devitalization of the tissues are due to diabetes mellitus. Therefore, all the diabetic more exposed to this disease. The tissue may be also devitalized due to malnutrition and anemia in old age. ICU patient, which is usually comatosed and lie in the same position with poor nursing care without changing of position. In comatosed patient, there is disturbance of micturition and defecation and in poor nurse care urine and the stool contaminate the bed contaminate the skin 
leading to Breeders Bosing Factor 4 bed source. What are the pathological features and the clinical features of this patient? Sure history of the predisposing factor, prolonged recumbency in bed, old age, etc. And characteristic ulcer de develop in pressure area, especially opposite bony prominence. The commonest sites for uh, pressure sore, compression of tissue and gangrene and ulceration is ischial chibrosi or sacrum or heel or malleoli of the greater trochanter are the common site. Less commonly may occur in the calf region or in the back of the trunk, opposite the elbow or shoulder, less commonly and rarely back of the head, like this patient, gangrene in the back of the head. Um, these are the common sites which uh, in which there is bony prominence and the tissues are compressed between this hard bone and the bed. There are four stages for uh, bed sores. Pathologically, what are the stages? Stage one. In stage one, the skin is still intact not broken, not ulcerated, but the skin is inflamed, red, and warm skin. This is stage one. This is the shape clinically. This is stage one, bit sore. Skin is still intact, no ulceration, but the skin is inflamed red warm skin as any inflammation in stage two stage two ulceration occur but the ulcer is superficial ulcer partial sickness of skin is destroyed destruction of epidermis or epidermis and the part of the dermis leading to formation of superficial ulcer like this patient, superficial painful ulcers, and the surrounding skin becomes discolored. Okay, this is stage two. Partial sickness skin loss affecting the epidermis or dermis, leading to this superficial ulcer. Stage three, full sickness skin loss. All the skin is lost. And what is this? Yellow tissues, subcutaneous fat. Therefore, the ulcer becomes more deep, affecting the whole skin and subcutaneous tissues. But the ulcer is superficial to the deep fascia. The ulcer stop at the deep fascia. The ulcer very deep, painful, with discoloration of the surrounding skin. This is stage four bed sore in which the ulcer destroys the skin, destroys subcutaneous fat, and exposure of the tissues deep to the deep fascia. Exposure of muscles, tendons, ligaments, bones, joints, leading to very deep 
ulcer fall of dead tissues fall of tissue debris and the bus with offensive odor Pathologically, these are the four stages of bed sores intact skin but inflamed skin is stage one superficial ulcer partial sickness skin loss stage two full sickness skin loss with affection of subcutaneous tissues stage three invasion by deep ulcer into the deep fascia and the muscles, bones, the ligament, and the involvement of all the structures deep to the deep fascia. These are the stages pathologically, and these are the stages clinically. Stage one, inflammation. Two, superficial ulceration. Three, deep ulcer eroding the skin with subcutaneous fat. Erosion of the structures deep to the deep fascia with exposure of muscles. These are muscles or bone or tendons. This is stage four. What are the investigations needed for bed sore? The investigation needed for bed sore, culture and sensitivity for swab or discharge from this ulcer to give local and systemic antibi antibiotic according to culture and sensitivity in the treatment. Blin X-ray very important to detect bone affection. MRI to show the condition of the soft tissues. What are the complications of bed sore? Sure death due to massive infection. It is a type of gangrene. It is a type of infective moist gangrene, therefore severe infection leading to bacteremia, toxemia, septicemia, bioemia. Severe pain may lead to exhaustion due to interference with sleep. Toxemia may affect the heart leading to myocarditis. Toxemia and bacteremia may affect the brain leading to encephalitis may affect the kidney leading to nephritis and renal failure. All these factors may end by this in neglected cases. What is the proper treatment for bed sores? Treatment of bed sores is prevention of this sore. Treatment is mainly prophylactic by proper scaleful nursing with a change, with frequent change of position of the patient and regular turning in the bed. Always we should keep the skin absolutely sterile, dry, healthy skin, and correct any factor which devitalize the tissue. Correct the general condition of the patient, proper control of diabetes, correct malnutrition, correct anemia, and in exposed patient we may use an air mattress. Air mattress is a mattress full of air leading to prevention of pressure on the tissues. Air, very soft, no counteraction, no compression of the tissues between the body weight and the bed. Curative. A bit sore okay, occur, borobar, local and systemic antibiotic. Regular surgical debridement. Debridement excision of the dead tissue and the sloughs and the closure of the wound by this method which is called vacuum assisted closure vacuum assisted closure <coughs> which will be taken in full detail in wound closure this is a very recent method 
<coughs> to close contaminated wounds. When the wound become and the ulcer become free from infection, containing healthy viable tissue, plastic skin coverage can be performed to shorten the period of recovery and to allow rapid healing. This is a bit sore. Thank you for good listening.